Hello, and welcome to the IndieLight 101, how to get your new IndieLight site ready for launch. Uh, before we start, I'll just let you know that attendees are in listen-only mode. And if you have any questions, please type it into the questions pane. And at the end, we will go over the questions. My name is Shantique Gelkow, and I am an Indie Commerce team member. I provide customer support and training for Indie Commerce and Indie Light stores. This webinar is for brand new Indie Light stores or stores that have had their Indie Light site but need extra help to finish configuring their site. I'll be going over some basic steps to help you finish configuring your site. So we won't be delving too deeply into any one topic, but by the end of this webinar, you should be able to complete your site configuration with your own content and be ready to schedule a go live training session. Okay, so before we hand your site over to you, we configured it with basic uh, information and we leave it up to you to finish the configuration and to add your own personal touch. But before we finish configuring this sample site here, let's take a look at the Help Center. So all of our Help Center material lives on bookweb.org and to find it, you would hover over four booksellers and you'll see it says Indie Commerce and Indie Light here. And for the Indie Light Help Center, you just click on Indie Light Help Center right here. As you can see, it provides some basic information on our, our coverage and on how to contact us for emergencies and links to webinars or other training videos. Um, the important thing we're looking at today is the written documentation that's here and what is relevant to new stores would be would fall under intro to Indie Light or site building. Uh, intro to Indie Light will give you a guideline on how to start and site building basically gives you uh, the tools to add content to the site. Okay, so what we're interested in looking at here is the getting started documentation because it'll help kick off where we what we want to do with our new site. So as you can see here, it says, I just received my site, what's next? And these are just suggestions and guidelines of where to start, and it's a good place to start, especially if you're a new store. So the first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at check your store information. And we'll, through our presentation, we'll go over a lot of, of, of these suggestions as well. So now that we know where all of our help documentation lives, let's go back to our sample site and then we can start configuring our site. So the first suggestion is of course to update our store information. So let's do that. And how do you do that? You go to store, configuration, store, and we just click on it. And you should just check here just to make sure that the information is accurate. And the email address should be the store email address, not your personal address. So make sure you enter that there. And the important part of this area here is down here. Um, at times, we may need to contact the store about the website or about online orders. And we have experience uh, not being able to find a person at the store who knows anything about uh, their website or online orders when we've reached out to stores in the past. So we've added this information here so the stores can tell us who we should contact if we need to contact someone at the store. So it's very important that you add the person who works on the site on a regular basis into these fields here. And another thing that you should also check here is you should also check the store address just to eyeball it and make sure that it's correct uh, because we enter it during configuration. Um, there could be typos, so hopefully not, and you can make any corrections. In the next area to check your store information is under configuration system site information. Again, here, just make sure all the information is correct. You can even add a slogan if you want to, but not necessary. The important thing here on this page here is also to make sure that you're adding the correct email address here. And then once you have done so, 
all you have to do is just click on Save Configuration. So now we've added our store information. Let's go on back to our home page. So the next thing we want to take a look at is how do we update the color? How do we add our own logo? Basically, how do we add our own personal touch to the site? So that is called um, theme. Your site has only one theme and that theme can be found in the appearance settings. So let's see, as you can see here, this is a logo, it's generic. This is our store name and our logo. And let's say we don't want any of these things. We want to add our social media icons as well. So let's go into our settings to make updates to these. So if you click on appearance, you'll see that the in the light only has one theme if I have mentioned, and do not change any configuration on this page. Uh, there's no need to do that. Um, and then when we go into the settings here, we'll see that there is a color scheme so we can change our site color. And you can see all of the different elements on the home page that you can change. And it comes with preset colors as well. It's preset to blue, but you can change it to red. You can change it to purple. Let's say we want to change it to purple. And as soon as you change the color, you can see that it's reflected in the preview here. Let's say we like the, this color purple, but we want to update it, uh, update the navigation and footer background to maybe a lighter color and not too purple. Um, we can change it a little bit like that and we can see that it's reflected here and we like that and maybe we'll change the text color. As you can see here, the text color is a, a dark charcoal. If you want it to be pitch black, uh, you would just change all of the numbers to zero. So let's do that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six zeros. Okay, so we'll, we're not going to change anything else because I'm pretty happy with a uh, with the color and you can always come back here and change the color later as well. Okay, so now we're going to scroll down to toggle display. The toggle display area is um, the area where you control the, the logo region, the area at the top. For example, we saw that there was a logo there and I want to keep a logo there, but we're going to add our own logo in a little bit. And then there's also a site name and site slogan. Let's say we don't want the site name, site slogan, just uncheck it and it won't appear anymore. And there's also an option to add the store address that we saw in the store information page as well. But let's say we're not gonna add that there because it's gonna be included in our logo. So we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna go to the logo image settings. And here you see it's using the default logo. So what we want to do is we want to uh, uncheck that so that we can upload our own logo. And you can see as soon as you uncheck it, there is a option here to upload logo image. So let's click into it to choose a file. Now I've already prepared um, some files in advance. So when you get your site, of course, before you upload your logo, you would do the same thing. Now I'm going to choose, what this does is, of course, it goes into your computer and I saved it in a folder and I'm just going to select the file that I want. I'm going to click on open. As you can see, it's loaded on here, but it hasn't been completely uploaded yet until I save the page. And another thing that you want to do is you also want to add a favicon and you would uncheck that. What is a favicon? It's, it's like a little logo that appears in the browser tab when you're not on a page. For example, this here would be the, the favicon for the ABA website. Um, so let's go ahead and upload a logo for that. You just follow the same procedure. And I'm just going to load that. I'm going to say open. Okay, so now we've uploaded a couple of items already. Now we want to add some social icon, and this is available by default on all Indie Light sites. It doesn't appear by default. You have to choose to display it. In order to display the social icons, is you would select the social uh, show icon, uh, social icon tab here. And then you would just copy the URL of your social media page. Uh, it's, you should copy the home page and paste it here. For example, I've already pre-entered a lot of the social media icons that ABA has, but 
and but I didn't um, add my the Facebook page, so I'm going to go ahead and find the Facebook link, and I'm going to copy it and paste it here. So the ABA Facebook link lives here on Facebook. I'm just going to copy the link like this. I'm going to move back to our sample site. I'm going to paste it, and then I'm going to save configuration. Okay, so everything has been updated and you know it's been successful because you get this green message at the top here. So let's go to our home page and take a look at what our changes look like. So as you can see, the site is very different even just by changing the color and adding our own logo. And as you can see, I've included our address there, our contact information and store name, so I didn't really need to have it down here. And so for now, I'm going to keep everything as it is, but you can go ahead and um, go back in and change the colors of these links here if you don't want to. You can change, you don't like that color and adjust it uh, to your liking. What we recommend is if you have a particular store color, choose the color that matches uh, your store and your branding. Okay, I think that's the color that I like, and so far it looks good. Um, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is other elements on the home page. Now the other elements we'll look at are all of these things here. When you click on, you see a little gear. These things are called blocks. Blocks, uh, in simple terms, is just a, a way of adding content uh, to your site. The great thing about blocks is they can be enabled, disabled, and you can move them around to, uh, to different regions on your web page. So the blocks I want to start with are these blocks down here. These are the Indi ABA Indie lists. Uh, you should be familiar with them um, if you have been an ABA member for a long time or if you're getting started, we probably news, uh, send information about all the lists that's available. And of course, if you use IndieBound.org, they're also listed there as well. And we have it pulled onto your Indie Light site automatically. This is content that is maintained by the ABA, so you do not need to change it. It is readily available for news at the start. So let's just click on, let's say we want to take a look at the Indie Next list. I'm just going to click on that and you can see the whole list is here for your customer. Um, they can take a look at it and they can click into each book and then they can add it to their cart if that is the book they're interested in. So let's go back on the home page. And we put all of the content in the regions that we think will work best for the theme. We designed it so that everything is in a, a good location. But if you do not want any of these blocks to appear, you can just disable them as well. For example, if you're not interested in the reading group in the next list, what you could do is if you hover over that and you see a little gear appear, if you hover over that gear, it says configure block. Just click on configure block. It takes you into the block setting for that particular block and you can change it to none. And once you do that and you save the block, let's do that, and you can see it's dis it disappeared from the list. But let's say moving forward as you do more well, with your site and it's growing and there are book clubs available and you wanted to add it back in, you're not going to be able to find it on this home page anymore. So what you can do is the block have their own settings page. So in order to get to the settings page, you will go to structure and then you will click on blocks. And here is the main block page where all the blocks that are created on your site lives. Some of the blocks we've created for you and some of the blocks you can create yourself. A lot of stores do create their own custom block and all they have to do is click on this add block link here. We won't go over adding a block but there is documentation in our help center under site building. Now let's take a look at the demonstrate block regions here. To get familiar with where things can be placed that's a great location to check. 
as you can see, all of the items in yellow are all um, are the areas where you can place blocks. So blocks are very versatile. They can be placed all over the place. It does is not made for a, a specific region. Um, for example, the left sidebar, the content, we have a lot of information there, and all the ABA indie lists are all located in these regions here. Okay, let's exit the block region. And now we're looking for our reading group. We want to enable it back, right? So everything that is enabled is above the disabled area. Anything that has not been enabled on the site is located under the disabled area. So we remember that it was called the reading group in the next list. So we can also just assign it to a location right from the base, the main setting page as well, without having to go into the, without having to click on configure and changing the region settings through here. So I'm going to head back out and we're going to do that. We're going to click on the region area. And we are going to select, it came from, I believe, the fourth bottom. That was the last one on the list. But we can know where it goes by scrolling back up. As soon as you add it, it will, it will appear above. So right here is on the fourth bottom. It's the only item there, so it's a correct region. So we have to remember to save blocks at the bottom. So let's do so. Okay, so the block is saved. And so we'll go home. And as you can see, it's placed back there. But if you don't want it here and you want it in the left sidebar, you can just choose the left sidebar region as well. Okay, so the other element on this homepage that we have to pay attention to, and is also a block that we created for you uh, before we handed the site over, is this block here. This is the footer block. And there are pages connected to this footer block. Now, these pages are not complete yet when we turn the site over to you. You must click on every single one of them and make sure that all the content is correct. For example, let's take a look at the help. Some of these are general questions about where you're located. And, and oftentimes, if we don't know this information, we'll just leave it blank and we'll have you enter the correct information. So make sure you check here and enter all the information that applies. And if it's wrong, you can delete it and correct it. Uh, and to do that, you would just have to click on this edit tab here. And you don't need to know any programming because you're using a WYSIWYG editor is what you see is what you get editor. Um, and you just put your cursor next to something you want to change. If you want to delete it, you would just delete. And if you want to add something, just type something in your browser, I mean, into the, the editor. And then once you make your changes, don't forget to click Save. As always, when it's updated successfully, you'll see a green banner at the top. And then you'll see the changes reflected here on the page itself. So make sure you review all of these questions as well. And also the return policy is just a generic return policy. So please go over this and update it. The one other thing that I want to show you also is the, the privacy policy. Um, sometimes if you see uh, this red thing right here, this is where you have to go in and add your store information. And I pre-filled it with uh, my sample site store information. And when you when you do that, you can you can delete you don't need to keep it the red color in the brackets. Okay, the so one other important thing on this page here is the contact us form. This is a form that was generated by the system itself. Customers can use this form to send you an email right from the website. Now you have to make sure that this form is set to email a person or email the correct person. So let's do that. You would go to structure contact form just click on contact form and then you'll see that right now the recipient we can click on uh, edit the recipient is ck at bookweb.org if you don't want it to go to ck at bookweb.org and you want to add someone else just delete this and add someone else but if you want to add another email you can just add another e a comma just a comma 
in another email right next to it. And then if you save, you can see it's now going to email two people when someone enters that form. And that's all you really have to do for that contact form. And of course, just because we created this for you doesn't mean you can't edit the block itself. The block itself, of course, can be edited similar to the other block. You just click on the little gear, you come to the block, and you can make any changes that you want to make here. Okay, so now that we've taken care of the footer block and make sure we update the information that we're supposed to update, there is another block that we should look at quickly. And this is the Browse Books block. Uh, this is the, all the categories that's available through Ingram. And these are all of the books that's been pushed to us uh, through Ingram itself. And as you can see, um, you see all of these titles here. They're provided to us through what is called Ingram's desirability. Let's say these books are desired. Um, they have a score a call in Ingram desirability. Let's just take a look at it briefly. Um, if you go to the a product page, you'll see under admin product details. This is only visible to store admins. You can see that this book that ha it has a high desirability value. That is why it's located um, at the top of our browse book page. So that's not information that uh, we add, it's information that we receive. And the important thing to know about this browse books block is that you can edit this browse books box to show uh, only the categories that you want to appear here and you can also set this to show um, maybe a different main category so let's go and take a look at that quickly and let's say we uncheck some of these things that we don't want to appear for example if you're a uh, if you're a children's bookseller, you may not want to highlight all of these things immediately. You want to maybe just keep the ones that are related to children. Um, and so uncheck the ones you don't want and then come down here and just select, let's see if we can find them, juvenile and juvenile fiction. And there's a couple more. You can do four categories at a time. So this is how we change what appears on the page next to the browse categories block. You don't need to change anything else. You just save block and then we'll come back to the page. And now you see the information has changed. Now it's just showing children's books. You know, and people can browse the children's books here. It doesn't mean that they can't um, look and search for other books that are available. It just means that on this page, the thing that they see first are the children's books. Okay, so let's go back to our home page. Clicking on your logo will take you to your home page. Let's update these three front page book lists here. Now, a little bit about the front page book list. You can have up to five lists, but by default, we only display uh, three initially. If you want to have the other two enabled for your site, just all you have to do is email us and let us know, and we'll do that. Now, these are also blocks, but they're not the same as these other blocks because they are connected to a particular page. And you, by editing that page, you edit the book covers that appear here. For example, what we're going to do with these front page book lists is we're going to um, add a couple more books. We're going to change the title and we're going to link this title to the page that it's connected to. So how do we find out the page that it's connected to? Let's click on the content tab. Uh, the content tab lists all the pages that you've created. And you can, once you create more, more content, for example, you can filter by the various different content. So I'm going to look for front page book list one on this page. And I'm just gonna click into it like this. And you can see it matches with the cover images that we see on that grid on the home page. Now to edit it, you just click on edit. And you can remove a title or you can add more titles. Let's say I want to remove this title and add another title. 
uh, in its place. Why well, would I'm just going to go grab an ISBN? And I'm going to add some fall books because fall is coming and I want to prepare my site for fall. And I just delete that. I put in the new ISBN and I click uh, outside of the box and you see the new one uh, is loaded. And if I want to change the order of it, I can also just move move it like this. And it will, when I, once I save it, this book will now show here. And then let's say I want to add another one, just going to grab another ISBN. And there we go. And then once you add all the new titles that you want to add or you delete and remove the old ones uh, that you want to remove, all you have to do is click on save. And as you can see, I've successfully added uh, two new books and I've moved this higher. And so let's go and take a look at our home page. Uh, before we do that, though, let's, uh, because we want to link to this page, let's do another thing. Let's edit it again and let's change this to a title that's not, doesn't say front page book list one. Let's just, we can change this to recommended children's books instead, because that's what they are. And then save. Okay, perfect. So once I save it, you can see that the URL has changed before it said front page book list. Every time you change a, a title of a page, the URL will also change. So, so keep that in mind. So what we need from this page is we'll need the path to, uh, to add to our uh, link. So the path is everything after this full URL, which is everything up to the slash here. So the path is recommended-children's-books. So I'm going to copy that and I could paste it into my notepad if, if I wanted to, but since I'm going to go and change it right away, I'm just going to copy it like that. And then I'm going to go back to the home page so we can see our results in a little bit. And you can see that the new book um, appears here now in place of the other book. So we push the book down and the new book appears. And now let's go and to change this. Now see, this didn't change because this doesn't come from that page. This comes from the block. So in order to change this, we would have to hover over that, go to configure block, and then we just add the same thing. We just add the same title so that we know that this particular block is connected to that particular page. And we could also say click for more as well if you want to, but you don't have to because if someone hovers over it, it's, it's clickable and it should be obvious. Okay, so here is what we're, where we're going to add the link. It's called block title link settings. If you don't see this um, link, that means the module has been enabled for your site. So you would need to contact us to request that the module gets enabled. And the title path is just what we copied from the URL of the page. And there's nothing else you need to do after that. You just need to save block. And then we'll come and then we'll take a look. And then here you go. If I click on the recommended children's book, it will take me to a page with more titles. If you want, you know, if you have more than six titles, this is a good way to um, to display those titles for your customers. Okay, so we'll go back to the home page as well. And so we're just going to quickly update these. We're not going to link these to a page to their page, but we're just going to quickly update the the block title so that our site is ready. This is recommended. YA. So let's get rid of that. Let's add another. Okay, there we go. Recommended IA and save block. And there you go. And the third one is the same thing. It would be, let's just, let's just do it now. 
So this is recommended sellers. And then we just delete this because we're not linking it to the page and we just save. Okay. So our front page is looking really good right now. Um, let's take a look at but there is something here that looks a little strange. Let me just click on here so that we can see. So why is this message here? No front page content has been created yet. That's a really strange message because your site does have content on it. So it may seem a little confusing to you to see that, but the thing with Drupal is you have to create a page. Um, and then promote it to the front. And what the content that you have now on uh, here, they're just blocks, number one. Um, and if you want to remove this, you have to create a page. Um, or if you don't want to have this page, um, this message here, if you don't want to create a page, there's also a module that we can enable called the empty front page module that can remove this message. But let's just say we really do want to add a welcome message. So let's do, let's do that. Let's go to uh, content, add content page. And you're already familiar with the page itself because we've edited the pa uh, pages previ previously. So now I'm going to add my content, but I've typed in my content already on a, a notepad outside of the computer. I find that this is the best way not to lose what you're working on because on occasion, if you have network issues or something, you move away from your computer and yeah, it reloads, um, you'll lose everything that you've worked on if you type it directly into the editor. So we recommend typing everything outside of your editor and then copy and pasting uh, into the editor. You should just use a plain text editor like Notepad. Okay, so here we are. And my title would be Shop With Us. And there you go. That's all you have to do. Type your information in, add a title, and scroll to the bottom, and then you'll see something called publishing options. Make sure you click on promoted to front page because this will push this page to the front. If you plan on promoting more than one page, you would select sticky at top of list. This would force this page to always stay at the top, but that's not necessary for here. So I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna go back to our home page, and you can see right here, that now we have a welcome message uh, up there and the, that empty front page message is gone. So our site is looking pretty good right now. I say we're almost done with our site, but we should still create, have a few other things uh, we want to finish. For example, we want to add some more pages um, to our website uh, at this time, a day and time, you know, everyone's going through the uh, the pandemic, and you should put a message up there about your store, whether it's open, whether it's closed, uh, whether you offer curbside uh, pickup. So it's good to to put something up there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a page, and then we're going to add it to the menu item at the top. So the same way that you create um, this page here, you would just go to content, add content page. And again, I've already saved this page uh, in my notepad. I've written it out already. So I'm going to just copy the title. You can change it and you know, make the title anything you want as long as it's clear and then just copy that area here and make sure I copy everything. I'm just gonna paste it in the body here. And it looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna close these gaps a little bit um, just by back putting my cursor down and hitting backspace. Okay, I think it looks good, but let's say you wanted to highlight some information so it stands out. So I'm gonna highlight this first paragraph. I think it's important in everything and all the, of the headings as well. 
I'm go, just going to highlight it by bolding it. Okay, so I think this looks good now. So what I'm going to do is scroll all the way down and you'll see here it says menu settings. What you want to do is you want to select provide a menu link and you can see the title automatically gets pulled in here. You can change this title as well to make it shorter. So you may want to say, I want to move this. COVID-19 shopping message, delete this just to make it a little shorter up there in the main menu. Um, and I don't need to do anything else because I want it to stay at the top level main menu. So I'm just going to click on save. And so here you go. You see the message is there. If you click on this message, you can see um, we talked about um, what people are expected to do if they're coming to the store, what they're expected to do for curbside pickup, and what some information about online orders as well. So we have all of our information here. And the next thing that you should do is also, and uh, you can do, is create a wish list page. So if I've already created the wish list page and I'm going to add it to this menu item. Now again, to find the pages that you've created, click on content and it's called create a wish list. I'm just going to click on it here. I created this the same way I created the other page. Um, I did add an image here. Um, adding images, the information for that can be found on the help center under site building. Okay, so we click on edit. I want to add a menu item, the wish list menu item. So I'm going to create a menu for this. And you can just say wish list information or create a wish list. I'm just going to keep it as create a wish list and I'm going to save it. So we're getting more information on our site here, which is looking better by the minute. And why do you want to offer creating a wish list? Uh, wish lists are a great way for customers to, um, to send what they want to their friends and family. Uh, we do encourage you to let your customers know that the wish list exists. And these are the actual instructions for creating a wish list on an Indie Light site. So if you want these instructions, um, you know, just let me know. You know email staff at bookweb.org and I will send these to you or we can also make them available to you as well. Um, there is a wish list documentation in the Help Center. Um, okay, so we are done with that. It says, and I think it's looking pretty good, but I want to move some things around. Um, let's say my menu items here. I want to I don't like these things back here. I want to move it a little forward. So I'm, to do that, you can hover right over the menu item itself and you can click on edit menu to, to go there directly. As you can see, let's move this a little further up near hours and direction. And I'm going to put it up there. As you can see, I've also enabled, uh, I've also created an About Us page where uh, some, some stores do that. And if you want to disable the page, all you have to do is uncheck, uncheck the enable link here and the page will, will not be seen. Let's say I wanted to add this to my site and I want to put it in the front. I would just have to, um, just have to move it up the top and make sure it's enabled and then I save it. And here you go, About Us is here, About Us is here now and if you click a look it's just a simple explanation about who we are as a bookstore. Um, some stores do add that and I like to add a little bit of it out there so that's um, it's a good thing to, to do. Okay, and another thing is also you see here the event calendar. Now, the event calendar is an actual calendar. It's dynamic. If you create an event content type, the event will appear here. To create an event, you would go to content, add content, and you would click on event. Let's go to the 
you just add your title, add your information, very similar to creating a page. The only difference is there is an event date that you have to add. Um, you can choose the date. You can choose to show an end time or end date if it has one. You don't need to do that. You would just uncheck it and just put the, the one time there. And you can add an address here as well. If it's an off-site place, you can, you can change it. But right now, if it's virtual, what you would do is just say virtual, and then you provide that virtual information uh, here in the body. And then once you save it, it automatically appears. Let's go back to the calendar and take a look at our actual event page. And of course, on the event page itself, if I go back, I didn't mention this, you can also add a book here and say if it's an author event, they can purchase the book directly from this event page. Okay, go back to view. And when you create an event, it not only appears automatically in the calendar, it also appears right here in the upcoming events um, block. Now, if you're not offering any events at all, you can, of course, go back to your main menu through that link there, and you can just uncheck disable. You don't need to delete it just in case um, you want to put it back up when you do do events, and you can just save it. So now the event is gone, and then you can also do the same thing with the block as well. Just go into configure block, and you can just set this to none. This will automatically remove it from the block area. Okay, and talking about blocks, these, of course, you've already know, they can be moved, the order can be moved in the block settings page, but I like them the way they are right now, so I'm just gonna keep them as they are. So I think our site looks really good. Um, we can add some more information to fill this area up if we wanted to. Um, you can link, put a link here, uh, to more information about us, or you can, can put a link there, say, hey, check out our wish list information, and they can click onto there. So talking about wish list, before we go any further, if they want to add a wish list, all they have to do is click onto a particular book cover, click on the add a wish list, and will automatically come onto the wish list page like this. And Customers can manage it themselves by going to the My Account and wish list. And of course, they can email the wish list to many people as well. So this is a good thing to promote, especially now during the holidays. Okay, the other thing that we want to get to is, of course, we want to get to the available features page. Now, every new store should know that there is an available features page. So let's go to store configuration, account information and preferences, store features. Any new feature that we add comes under amazing new features, but there are also other features that we um, have as well um, that may be beneath, for example, blocks, uh, I mean blogs, you can also blog on your site. So we can also enable that blog feature for you if you do blogging and you want to add it as a feature on your site. Now, anything that has already been enabled will be darkened, like grayed out, and you won't be able to select it to be enabled, but you can request it be disabled. Now, let's say you want to request a gift card, uh, fee the gift card feature. You would select enable this feature, and you would come down here and you would send a request to ABA. Now the gift card feature allows you to sell the gift card product. Let's say you have in-store gift cards. You offer gift cards uh, in the store and customers can go in and redeem it through the store. Um, you would request this and you can sell it in your store and they can go, uh, or you can sell it online and they can use it in the store. That's the purpose of uh, the gift card product. And there's also a donation a block. What some stores do is they put up a donation a block and link to a page to receive donations either for themselves during, during the pandemic because customers want to support the store or to support a community organization. Um, the money would go to, to some community service somewhere 
where the store is located if the store is into doing community activities. So if you want to do that, you can also request a donation feature as well. Okay, so the next thing we'll talk about is we'll talk about the available preferences. Uh, these are also available. If you're a new store and you're not familiar with this, you would just go to store configuration, account information and preferences and click on store preferences. And you can see here, these are the preferences for your book settings. Uh, it gives you um, some control over, over your, your books. And if you scroll down, you'll see other settings here. Um, the thing that I want to draw your attention to here are these two things that I have checked off. You um, may not have seen them before um, if you haven't visited this page because these are new features. Uh, we have now enabled uh, this feature to allow Indie Light stores to be able to sell sidelines. Um, these sidelines are sidelines that are available at Ingram. They're called the Ingram Department Code T and Ingram Department Code M. They include calendars, maps, uh, blank books, or gifts and games such as puzzles. Um, as long as you can find it at Ingram, uh, you should be able to sell it through your site and it will appear automatically through your site. So, so if you want to sell that for the holidays, um, you want to uh, select this option. And these options up here will mostly go over these options during our go live training. And you can also add, there's also another, another option here to add a special messaging to the books that cannot be returned. Um, remember I showed you where the admin product detail information is on a book product page? Well, if a book is not returnable, it will appear in that admin product uh, area. And you can change this text to say something else as well, but I think this uh, looks sufficient to me. And another option that you may want to enable also is to always show a pre-order badge. Um, books that are pre-ordered um, at least will have that badge um, as a visual reminder to let customers know that they're not gonna get that book uh, until a lot later because it's a pre-order. So let's just enable that and we're gonna save our configuration. So let's take a look um, at some of these uh, books. So I've created a page for you already um, called Puzzles. Now, if, uh, if you have an Ingram account, um, you can go onto iPage and find the books that they are, find the puzzles and games that they offer. And you can take the ISBN and you can create a page similar to this uh, on your site so that you can offer it to your customers through the website. So let's take a look at here. For example, see here it says this book cannot be returned. Um, well, not necessarily this book, but you can change it to say this item cannot be returned because it'll it'll apply to to everything on this on the site. So you can change that title. If I click into it further, I can look at the admin comments as well here, and it tells you returnable to Ingram. No, and this is a Department M title. Okay, so and let's take a look at an example uh, pre-order book as Shanti? well. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, we are at 1.18, we are 10 minutes yeah. uh, thing, and we have a few questions. Um, do you want to yeah, take the I questions think, now? Yep, this is uh, actually, we're just finishing. <laughs> okay. This is the end. The only last thing I'm going to tell everyone is uh, you should sign up for the go live process because the next topic would be a checkout preparation and preparing the site to accept online orders which we will not go over here but i wanted you to know um, so that we can um, schedule go live training for those stores who haven't gone live yet okay um christine brenner had two questions and both are related to uh the browse books okay. um so uh, let me read that. So Christine says, I can't get my browse books block to show up, even though it's, it is configured to show up on the left side. Um, if, okay. if, 
Yeah, the only I think the setting is probably yeah. the page where it should be displayed. Right, it's viewers probably in the block setting here. If you go to structure blocks, Christine, um, let's just go directly to the page itself. Get the, um, let's see, we'll go to a browse this page here. And I'm going to go into here. It's probably because it's something has changed. Uh, Shanti, Shanti your, uh, yeah. something is off with your uh, microphone. We are hearing static suddenly. Oops, can you hear me, can you hear me now? Yeah, no, it is a lot of static. It was fine before. Okay, I don't want to touch anything, so I will by now. Hello, hello? It's okay, so I, gonna... Maybe it is on my end. No, no, it's it's uh, your microphone. I still okay, hear so it. Let me unplug my, my microphone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, this is better. Okay, perfect. In that case, so maybe if you check the block setting, it should be set to browse slash book star. And it should, only, it should say only the listed pages. But if that doesn't work, uh, Christine, um, send me a separate note or I can send you a follow-up note as well um, to figure this out. So the best thing to do actually is to email staff at bookweb.org and we'll take care of taking a look to see why it doesn't show up. Um, okay, um, and also while we are on the browse book page, um, so, uh, after Shanti, your presentation, stores may go in to check the browse book page. Mm -hmm. And we did figure out that um, there is a, currently there is an issue with the browse books. Like if you go to the browse books, you will see that most of the books are hard to find. Like Shanti, what you mentioned earlier today, yeah, and we so just uh, figured out that there is a problem with um, the way the books are listed, and we are looking into fixing it. So when stores enable the browse book, and when you're visiting the browse book page today, you may see that most of the books are not readily available. It is just a bug. Once it's fixed, you should be able to see books that are available at Indra. And the same goes for uh, sidelines too. And Christine has another question. What is the tab for allowing sidelines? I think Christine wants the back to the store preferences page. Okay, so the that page is if you go to store configuration, account information and preferences, and you go to store preferences. You just have to select these two options here and then save configuration at the bottom. And uh, another question from Amy um, about the privacy policy. The pre-filled part seems like it appear, applies to the EU. Do we need to fill all that out? So what um, is the default privacy policy we have on the sites? Yeah, that is the generic one that we offer everyone. Um, it is true that it appears only for the EU, um, but it is a comprehensive one that we've updated. And so we just added to everyone. It doesn't hurt anything to have it there, I believe. Um, so for now, at least for if it's already there, I would just leave it there. Um, and I can find out more information whether it's absolutely needed or not. And I can get back to you in. Yep. And uh, just to add to what Shanti said, um, it was a recommendation, uh, I think it was last year, um, that all e-commerce platforms, we had to adapt to that with the new EU restrictions because you never know when you could have a customer from EU visiting your site. So we just included it there. But again, you do have the option to edit that and change the language. But our recommendation, as Shanti said, is to leave things there, or if you want to modify it, make it more clear, you can definitely do that. Um, um, yes, uh, Steve just commented on that. He says EU is the standard. Um, okay. And Steve, um, about the do we... it's automatically on the form. and. Um, so that you won't hopefully get any spam 
uh, going through your your contact form. Okay, I think that is it, and um, most of the other questions have been answered. So I, uh, that is it, Shanti, with the questions. Okay, if anyone else uh, no longer has any questions, I just want to do a quick thing. I just want to show you what the um, the pre-order, this was uh, previously, the pre-order would look something like this. Um, so it's just a visualized um, image so that your customers will not expect to have the book ready uh, to be shipped to them soon. Sometimes they don't always pay attention to the date. And it also says coming soon available for pre-order. So it's um, it's four months from publication. And let's go back and take a quick look at our sample site again. And here's the, so our sample site is done and we're ready. So whenever you guys are ready to go live, uh, we recommend that you do it at least um, by the third week of October, at least to be ready for the holiday season. Um, as we've been hearing things go around, um, October is considered the new December. Um, so please start to prepare your holiday season early. Um, go through your website to make sure all the information is updated. Uh, make sure you have a COVID policy or messaging uh, to your site. Uh, update your hours regularly if they change. Um, share information with your customers through social media. And if you haven't done so already, um, create a wish list or go through the checkout process, uh, especially after we've done the go live training. Um, and you should be good to go uh, during the holidays. So if no one else has any other questions, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And I want to thank my colleague Gita for helping me out with the questions. And we will probably post this uh, sometime soon. Um, if you have any questions, please email staff at bookweb.org and we will get to your questions. And um, thank you everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Shant. See, that was very informative um, and I'm sure most of these tools will be ready for go live training soon. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.